Okay, so let's go over the hamstring muscles. Mickey, are you ready for this one? Yes. It's your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Find me back here. Good. Okay, so I'm just going to demonstrate in one side of the body here. Let's just come up here and let's just start palpating a little bit here. Good. So if we're going to the outside here, we'd be going more towards the bicep femoris. Now in terms of the origin, long head is on the ischial tuberosity. So we're going all the way down from here, taking it right down, you okay? Yep. Short head is the linea aspera. It inserts into the head of the fibula. So we're talking all the way coming up here. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna kinda work our way around a little bit. Okay, feel that a little bit more? Yeah. Like that motion yeah. in there? So just coming straight up, you feel it to a certain degree. Yeah. From a practitioner's perspective, I could use the thumb on here, but it's gonna be very hard on your thumb. Yeah. I put my hand across here, I'm not making a fist, I have an open hand, and I'm just taking, I get a little bit of circumduction there, and I can actually feel the delineation between the different layers of the tissue. Getting mm -hmm. circumduction also allows me to release fa fascial restrictions. So the action of the bicep femoris is it basically flexes the knee and extends the hip. The long head only extends the hip. Innervation for the long head is the tibial part of the sciatic nerve and the short head would be the common fibular part of the sciatic nerve. Doing okay there? Yes. Okay. So we're gonna move over a little bit here. Get more towards the middle part in terms of the semimembranosus. And again, all these muscles insert way down along where the ischial tuberosity is. Insertion is the posterior surface of the medial condyle of the tibia. Action basically flexes the knee, extends the hip, contributes to medial rotation of the thigh. It's innervated by the tibial part of the sciatic nerve. So we're talking L5S1, S2. Good, okay? Yep. Okay, so to semi tendinosis, move over a little bit. Origin, again, all three we can access here in terms of the ischial tuberosity, except this one inserts on the medial surface of the upper tibia. So that's interesting because people wonder why the hamstrings are so involved in knee function. You start to consider the origin insertion, you realize it has a huge effect on it. Now, innervation, tibial part of the sciatic nerve, so that would be L5, S1, S2. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go and move it around a bit here. All right. Now, what I want to, okay, so when I'm here, you can feel me palpating in here, but mm -hmm. as soon as I start moving into circumduction, yeah. I can actually feel the different layers of tissue moving across each other. Mm -hmm. So we're actually feeling a gliding or lack of gliding. Yeah. So get in an area here, like right here, I can feel that restriction right there. Yeah. And I get into there, and let's not go too heavy, start fairly light, and then move in a little bit more. And then we've got it release a little bit. Excuse me, move it around a bit. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So these are incredibly effective techniques for releasing the hamstrings. But the main thing is you've got to be able to feel what you're working on and use circumduction to actually feel the different layers crossing. Very effective.